All right, so this video is going to show how to service your clutch in a Z50 Honda or CT70 with a three-speed auto clutch. Uh, these are going to be the tools and materials you need for the job. That's your gasket for the side cover, gasket for the clutch cover at the basket, new clutch friction material disks. I drained my oil, so you're going to need another quart of oil. That is wet clutch approved motorcycle oil. Specialty socket for the clutch basket nut to remove your clutch. Impact driver to use with the tool. A 10 millimeter wrench to loosen your kickstart shaft so you can get your cover off. A flathead screwdriver to use to pry the engine case covers apart. Then you're going to need some screwdriver, Phillips head, not Phillips head, but actually JIS bit, Japanese industrial standard bits. A razor blade, flat blade to scrape your gasket material off. And an impact. Uh, screwdriver to loosen your case screws and a hammer so I already drained my oil uh, I'm going to show you real quick I lay my bike over on its side I use I actually use my kids bean bag in a moving blanket uh, but it makes for an easy job So first step is we're going to go around the perimeter of the side cover, right side cover, clutch cover, and loosen your case screws with the impact screwdriver and a hammer and a JIS bit. So work your way around the case, loosen those up, and then come back with a screwdriver and remove your case screws. All right, so now that I got all my screws removed, uh, I realize I'm going to have to take the foot stand off to get some clearance. So go ahead and take that off if you're working on the uh, KO, K1, Z50s. Might need to do that on any other bike too, but just on this one. Uh, I had to use a razor blade. I gently broke apart my seal at the gasket because the cases were kind of glued together. Uh, and then use a flathead screwdriver to gently pry around this side cover and uh, break it loose. Gently remove your side cover. And you'll see, you know, this is an old gasket, so it tore apart. Uh, part of it's on the center case and part of it's on the side cover you can use a straight blade here to scrape off the gasket uh, you want to keep the blade perpendicular to the surface so that you're not gouging the aluminum so I'm gonna have to work my way and clean all this stuff off all the gasket off of this mating surface I noticed here that the uh, clutch arm was oriented wrong so whoever went in here before put it together wrong I'll show you how to how it should have been again I'm gonna scrape off all this existing 
uh, gasket material. If you have any problem, like when I have a complete engine rebuild, I like to use some of this remover on the case and other areas that gas gets stuck to. It helps dissolve it. Uh, I'm not sure if it's a good idea to use it while you're, you have a working motor, but uh, just FYI. So I'm going to use a baggie to collect all my parts that are uh, going to be removed from the clutch area. Spring. More of the clutch actuating mechanism here. There's your bearing. I guess it's kind of like a throw out bearing. So you got three screws now that are, have this cover on the clutch basket. You're going to need to use your impact screwdriver or impact uh, powered wrench, power tool to break these loose. I've had them where I've stripped them. They're in there really tight from the factory. So sometimes it's just almost impossible to get them out. I've had to drill them out, drill the heads off and take the cover off that way. But this is a Again, a JIS bit. So use my flathead screwdriver give it a few light taps to help break this cover loose then you'll have access to the uh, specialty nut that's retaining the clutch basket on the crankshaft there is a gasket here at this mating surface so that will have to be removed and replaced And then you'll see here, actually, it is, it's the clutch, but it also acts as a centrifugal uh, catch for a bunch of debris in the motor. So this area will need to be cleaned out. You can get all that caked out gunk out of there. Just use a flat tip screwdriver. There's your specialty nut holding on to the clutch onto the crank. And there is a locking washer that you need to push these tabs out. I'm going to get the tabs pushed out around the specialty nut so that I can have access to it with my uh, socket tool, the clutch socket tool. And just a little backstory on this bike. The uh, reason I'm replacing the clutch is because when you went to kickstart it, it felt like there was essentially no compression. After adjusting the clutch to its maximum point, it still uh, was having issues. So that was a sign that uh, the clutch is worn out and needs to be replaced. So if you ever run into that problem, uh, it could be your clutch, not necessarily no compression. Specialty nut tool. Use my impactor drill. Firmly hold the clutch basket while you loosen up this nut. Put that in the bag. Now you have that uh, retaining ring in there. I use two needle nose pliers to kind of shimmy it up. It could be a pain in the butt, but um, take your time and you know, eventually it will come out.
little bit of a tug of war, but there you go. Put that in the bag. We'll reuse that. And some of these clutch baskets come off the crank pretty easily. This one needed a few taps with a rubber mallet. Just gently give it a tap around the circumference of the basket. And that's your clutch basket there that has your friction material in it and your metal discs. I'll show you later how to take that apart and replace your friction material. I'm actually going to take the uh, gears off, the primary gear and the clutch gear off here so I get better access. It's just such a tight squeeze in here to get a razor blade and scrape off the uh, old gasket. You're going to use a... Uh, you got to get that retaining ring off. And your primary gear will slide off the transmission. You got your shifter star and shift arm in there. You can look at that, make sure everything looks okay. So now I got better access to do my scraping. Again, you want to make sure that the mating surface is all cleaned. So this is after I scraped for about 40 minutes, taking my time not to gouge it, but to uh, get everything off, clean up all the areas that had all the little flakes from the old gasket. This is a good time to use a towel and kind of clean out some of the residue from all the old crud that is on the bottom of the motor. There's an oil screen here, so make sure that's clean. You can blow it out with a compressed air, but that's another area that captures debris. I cleaned the outer uh, side cover, washed it, degreased it, blew it out with compressed air. So now we'll work on the clutch. So here's the clutch basket. There's a retaining ring here. All you need to do is use a flathead and push it out of the way. Once that's removed, you'll have access to the friction discs. So gently pry that off, put it to the side. There's your first part of your disc set up. This is a metal disc. Just, you want to make sure that it is not gouged or worn out. There are some specs on it, but uh, that's a replaceable part if needed. This one looks good. Just flip it around reverse way. Just, uh, you can reassemble it. There's your fiber disc that I'm replacing. These are pretty worn. Just want to soak your replacement fiber discs and oil for at least 24 hours with the same oil that you'll use for the motor. This is a wet clutch. So next is your metal friction disc again. Again you're going to want to get this and look it over. Just make sure there's no burning, excessive burning, warping, or gouging. There's your final friction disc. We can dispose of that. So I'm going to grab my new discs that have been soaking in the oil. Put the first one back down. There's those inner tabs that will, um, only one way to orient it down in there. So you push them down the tabs. Put 
put your metal disc back on. Second fiber disc. And your final metal disc. Put the hole, you can only put it on one way, and then those holes that are on the outside will fit over the tabs that are sticking up. You can see it's springy. That's how the clutch works. Uh, you're going to need to push it back down to get this retaining ring back in. You want to make sure that each one of those ends of the retaining ring has a tab to sit in. So orient it that way when you're reinstalling it. I'm just trying to make it even so each one of those ends has a good point of contact there. Just push it down, make sure it snaps into its recessed ring holes. And uh, that's it essentially. That's a simple clutch repair. You could take it apart further, but uh, that just for this case I'm only replacing the fibers. <clears throat> Now's the time to clean all that gunk out of the uh, centrifugal area. I just use a flathead. You're going to see how much dirt and debris was actually in this. Just take your time to get this cleaned out. Might as well get as much of it out of there as possible. A lot of crud. You know, just use a towel to kind of wipe out any other excess dirt. Alright, so it's going to be time to put it back on. Kind of the reverse, but I'll show you how to do it. You know, make sure you clean out your oil screen, put it back in. That's why it's nice to have a baggie. You can kind of pull all my parts out. Uh, there's your primary gear. You're going to put that back on. Make sure to put the circlip back on. There's your clutch crankshaft gear that connects with the primary gear.
I'm realizing that this didn't seat all the way down, so I'm just making sure that there's not something interfering with it. This ended up using a metal or a rubber mallet to kind of give it some hits to, and seat it better. Make sure your sir clips on there nice and tight. I'm kind of making sure it's seated as far back as possible. All right, so now we're ready for the clutch basket to go back on. Now that gear you see, that little gear that's behind there, you're going to make sure that it sits on the gear. And uh, you got to spin the primary gear a little bit to orient the gear teeth to embed themselves properly in the back of the clutch basket. Uh, if it's not seated all the way down, you'll see that you don't have enough threads to get the, uh, the retaining nut back on the crankshaft to hold the clutch on. So it might take a little bit of trial and error to make sure it seats, but you'll feel it as soon as it slides down. A little more fine tuning here. So it finally sat in, and now I see I have access to the threads. So we'll put the safety retaining ring on. And then the nut. I'm going to use my impactor to get that nut tightened after I hand thread it on. Next is the basket case cover and the new gasket. Actually, next is actually get the uh, prong, the safety prong. Bend that in there so that nut can't back out. 
and then we'll put the cover on. Getting a little ahead of myself there. That's the right part. I gotta clean the gasket off. Oh, I already did it. This got a little confusing. <laughs> Now you have three screws. Use your JIS bit screwdriver to tighten them. Next is your outer clutch components. Put the bearing back in. Make sure that the label brand is shown on the outside. Just put it back the same way it came out. I like to put all my bearings with the logos facing outward. Put it in there nice and gently. If it's not going in flush, it's going to give you a hard time. So easy does it. I'm just going to show you here with this mechanism inside of this clutch arm part there's a spring and a through hole part so just make you aware that there's some components in there and if they fall out that's how they go back in outer spring I just want to make sure these roller bearings are in there and uh, roll smoothly Correct orientation is about three o'clock. Side cover gasket. Make sure you got your your case studs there. Two of them. Sometimes they pull out in the side cover, but you definitely need those. The or alignment dowels, I guess you would call them. Clean cover. 
right, so we're going to get that put on. So after a while shimmying it on, I actually had to use... Sometimes they go on nicely, sometimes they don't. Uh, so I, this particular example, I put the screws in to help clench it down. Didn't want to put too much pressure on it, but the screws help a lot. Sometimes uh, it just doesn't want to seat itself. And uh, in this example, uh, after gently tightening around the perimeter of it, it popped into place and slid down. I like to do the crisscross tightening. Just kind of make sure your gaskets or your gasket is in place properly. You don't want to punch a hole through it. So after you get that all tightened up, next step for me was to put my foot pegs back on and the uh, kick shaft. And don't forget to put your oil back in the bike. This one is 800 mLs. Thanks for watching.